This is Alexa Linton, and you're listening to The Whole Horse Podcast. We're now in season six. Thanks to all of you tuning in and sharing the podcast with your friends to keep the momentum going. This podcast is dedicated to all things horse and all things that uplift equine well-being and welfare. And I'm having down-to-earth conversations with equine professionals about the little things that move the dial slowly but surely towards a better world for horses. You'll find all the episodes, 93 and counting now, on iTunes, Spotify, and wherever you get your podcast. Thanks for being here and enjoy the ride. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the Whole Horse Podcast. We're here today with one of my other favorite guests. This is sort of a theme this year. (laughs) We have Susan Tenney back with us today, and we're going to be diving into one of our favorite subjects today. And Susan, I'm so excited to have you back on the podcast. Welcome. Thank you so much. It's always a total delight. Awesome. So if you haven't listened to Susan's previous podcast, do that. Susan heads up elemental acupressure and she teaches uh, acupressure techniques and traditional Chinese medicine for animals, canines, horses, felines, I suppose, um, all, all of that. And she's just an amazing source of knowledge and wisdom. So yay. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's Oh, awesome. yeah. And you're just a beam of light, Susan. Every time oh, I get gosh. to connect with you, it's just like, oh, so. That's kind of how I feel about you. So <laughs> mutual spot there. Yay. Awesome. So I want to dive in because this subject is yeah. uh, so interesting to me. Yeah. And I know that the, um, my listeners are going to feel the same. And yeah. you shared somewhat about this. Uh, went into detail about this in the apprenticeship and it's like become a fave webinar for everyone. It's so interesting. So people are out there going to be like, what is she talking about? So <laughs> what I'm talking about is, is constitutions. And I'm, I'm going to let you take it away, Susan, and share what that means and how, you know, the work that you do looks at this piece. Um, because I know there's some really cool connections Uh, within this that we're going to talk about today. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So there are a lot of branches of Chinese medicine. So when someone says, you know, what's Chinese medicine about? It's, um, you know, there's a lot of basics that are in all of the branches, but the branch that I specialize, the thing that I get the most excited about is a branch called five element um, theory. And this is just a part of all of the amazing things you can find in East Asian medicine from centuries and centuries ago that has been developed and nurtured and cultivated over all these centuries. And what's amazing about this five element theory um, is that it sees kind of actually the whole natural world, but certainly ourselves as humans, as well as animals as being made up of these five basic types. And although it sounds rather reductionist, the way that we work with it is actually quite expansive and absolutely fascinating because what we see is there are these five aspects. You can kind of see it like different facets of a a gem, you know? You've got all of these five elements in you You've got all of their patterns, all of their functions, all of their beauties, but some of their challenges as well. And the way that you express your five elements is unique. And your horse's expression is also unique. There is no other animal on the planet who is going to have exactly the same pattern and expression as your horse. And so I think we tend, if you've encountered the five elements before, you can think, oh, that's so simplistic because there's not just five horses in the world. Of course there's not, of course. So it's much more like seeing um, a pie graph Mm. where all five of those, those elements are in every single horse. They're in all of us. And yet we all have different concentrations that get expressed 
expressed at different times in different ways. And also it'll change over time. In times of stress, certain things will show up that don't show up at other times. As they age, your horse may like have these new patterns that emerge. And so what we're basically looking at is pattern recognition. And the beauty is when you get even some beginner ideas about how these patterns work, it's like this magical key that lets you open the door and all of a sudden, certain things that have seemed you know, random and not connected and whatever, all of a sudden you see the whole pattern of why your horse behaves the way he does, why she has the health issues she does, why you connect the way you do, how they learn the way they do. And it's so juicy. There's so much there that we can't possibly go <laughs> do everything in one hour, but it is really, really a, uh, just full of insight that can really change the way that you interact with your animal because you understand them better. Mm -hmm. You kind of have the magic key. It's like the Rosetta stone for your horse. Mm. Yeah. I love that. Like that, that sense, like to me, I see the constitutions as almost a lens, like, <laughs> So I'm, I'm seeing through this pair of glasses and I'm seeing my horse or myself differently through that lens yes. in a way that I understand how to be with them and work with them and, you know, connect and support them in yeah. different ways. So this is kind of how I see that. And I, I know one of the pieces you brought up, Susan, that was so intriguing to me is this sort of how do these elements combine? So, you know, I know we'll get into this during this podcast, but it's this sense of, oh, so we've had this horse and then we have this human and we have the constitutional makeup of both. How does that interact and what does that mean moving forward? And and I find that like, oh, I'm, I'm so excited about that little conversation coming up. Um, yeah. I wonder if we might want to start with just explaining what the elements are first so Absolutely. that those who've never heard of this concept before can Absolutely. kind of get a sense of, you know, what, like what their horse might be. I know that was really intriguing to kind yeah, of yeah, hear yeah. those qualities of each one. Mm -hmm. So it can be a little bit like learning astrology and mm -hmm. like you can, you can pick up, you know, some, you know, daily horoscope and say, oh, you know, an Aries is going to have this happen today. So you can have it be kind of surface level, or you can do the deep dive and you can go with a professional that can figure out all sorts of, you know, really in-depth stuff. So that first level though, usually when you read a description of these five element types, so these are five patterns that we see in the world. When you read those five patterns, you'll hear your horse described in one element more than another because we all have personalities whether mm -hmm. we are horses or humans or cats doesn't matter we all have certain ways that we are in the world and so out of these five patterns we can see that usually there's one of the types that is expressed the most in our day-to-day -day lives mm -hmm. um Although the others are definitely, you know, playing there in the background as well. So, for example, if we're in a stressful situation, we take our horses into something stressful. Let's say we take them to a, a horse show. They're all young horses. They've never been before. They're all kind of freaking out in their own unique way. Well, what is going to stress them out? So our wood type horse, which is this one type among the five might be stressed out because he likes to be the leader and he might be a little bit more competitive with the other horses around, or he might be kind of impatient. Like, God, this is going to be really fun. And I want to jump the highest jumps possible. Let me at it. Why are you holding me back? I don't care about these silly braids in my mane. I want to get to the jumping. Like, let me at it. No grooming, please. <laughs> no. You know, <laughs> so actually with those types of horses, we do encourage like, keep your grooming minimal uh -huh. until after, mm -hmm. you know, let them get the buck out as we say. <laughs> so their motivation is action and let's do something together. Oh my God, that's going to be so fun. 
to jump those high jumps or do those barrels or whatever it is you do together. Whereas the earth horse, who we call the good as gold, is kind of like the polar opposite, right? Because these types, they thrive with comfort. Their motivation is comfort. So do they want to jump those super high jumps? Not really. Like they will if they have to, but it's not their, it's not what they're sitting there like, oh yeah, what they are super motivated by is rest and relaxation, food, easy going mm -hmm. and food. Like they <laughs> look at food and they gain weight, unfortunately. So these are the horses who like love the food the most. And yet, unfortunately, are the ones that are most likely to be the ones that have the muzzle. Um, but they just have a whole different set of um, ways that they learn, ways that they perform, ways that they connect with you. And once you understand those different types, instead of fighting against the horse and saying, my way or the highway, you've got to do it my way, you can say, well, who is this individual and how do I support their evolution, their expression, their blossoming into the best horse that they can be? And how do I interface with that so that I too can be the best horse lover that I can possibly be mm -hmm. so that you can create this incredible relationship that really just sits in your heart as the best part of your day. And so these five patterns, we give these names and this is, these are my names. These aren't like traditional names, but we, that, that wood horse, this wood element, which is just, um, the element thing. It's not like it's the periodic table of elements. It's just, these are just categories basically that mm -hmm. have tons of overlap on all the sides, but the dynamic um, horse, we call him the dynamo. And that's the wood horse who has all this energy, really strong leader, strong athletic presence. Mm -hmm. Then we have the fire who is more of a drama queen, more of the movie star version of the horses. So think instead of kind of that, like, hard driving thoroughbred type you're thinking more the arab with the flippy tail and the and the, and the chrome, dramatic response the chrome coat the whole thing yeah. <laughs> they love to shine both emotionally as well as physically mm -hmm. then the earth type is there what we call the good as gold which is that like oh my god they are just the bestest and sweetest and they can be stubborn yeah. When you kind of finally overgo their good nature, yeah, they'll they'll just stop going for you. They can be stubborn and 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 resistant, but only because you've taken advantage of their good nature. Because at their heart, they're easygoing. They don't want to fight. They're just like your bud. They're they're just like the perfect child's horse. Mm -hmm. and, and this is when I see them so often in lesson programs, yeah, of course. Yeah. And, yeah. and also I see them being, so this is a horse that I've seen being highly stoic. And that was yeah. one of the other sides of the earth horses. They are so stoic that their saddle might not be fitting and their bit is like not working for them. And, you know, they've got other things going on, but they're just like, Okay, like you know, okay. it takes a lot to get that reaction out of yeah. an earth horse. Yeah. I found, and yeah. so yeah, if you have one of those good as gold types, and they have turned into that mountain of resistance, mm -hmm. like I will not move forward. You can kick me, you can whip me, I don't care. I ain't moving. Wow, you have missed all of those early signs. Yeah, that our shining star. I forgot to tell you that name, but the the more dramatic Arabi one is the the shining star. They will let you know the second of immediately. Lands on them. Immediately, yeah, mm -hmm. immediately. <laughs> and the wood type is like, let me tell you, that's yeah. not okay. I mean, they're <laughs> fine at setting boundaries. They have no problem setting boundaries. Yep. But the earth type is like, I don't want to set a boundary. That's a lot of work. <laughs> like, I just want to get along. Can't we just get along? So they have very different responses. And if those first two, like. They're going to let you know if it's not working. It's going to make your life uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. The earth is going to go longer and you need to be paying attention. Yep. And it gets even more exaggerated on this whole same concept when we get to the metal. Because the metal element, which we call the perfect performer, they tend to send all of their stress internal. They are quiet. 
They are reserved. They are demanding and very, they're like the workaholic of the horse world. Like they will perform until they are two-legged lame, you know, like they will just keep Mm -hmm. going. But what you'll start to see with them, because it's quiet, because they're quiet and it's all internal, when things stop working with the metal horse, what you'll start to see is skin problems, yep. immune problems, immune issues that like nobody can figure out, or it's more about like lameness and stiffness. And they just turn into, well, they're, they're the metal and they start looking like a robot Yeah, emotionally, behaviorally, as well as physically, like they're not moving as smooth as they used to. Mm-hmm. And um, so if they've got that like stubborn cough that won't go away, yeah. What about yeah, digestive yeah. systems with the metal horse? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So they've got that large intestine in there. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And so the earth quiet is kind of still, they're still kind of the good guy. Like yeah. they're your buddy. So they're easier going. Those are the ones that, again, show up in the kids' programs a lot. The metal types are, um, they can show up in you know, heavy use situations as well because they are so sturdy. Um, but they can also be very high performers as well. Um, so if they're in the right hands, who's really respecting what they can do, they are, they will work until the cows come home. Like they are just amazing. But that can be abused if you're not paying attention, obviously. And you need to actually encourage that workaholic to take a pause and like just go out on a hack instead of, you know, doing the next level dressage. <laughs> like it does, yeah. you, can, you can pause. So there's that. But then we also have the water element, which is one of my favorites. It's something that in a way, I've, I kind of feel like I specialize in the water element because my understanding of the water element is that, well, we call it the wise mystic. And so these are those once in a lifetime horses or the very special ones where they're almost not a horse. They're really almost something else. And so your connection will be so profound. Not that you can't have profound interactions with the others. Of course you can. We all have profound interactions with our horses, but this is something special. These are these ones that transform everything. They'll transform the way you train horses. They'll transform the way you ride with horses. They'll transform what you do with horses. Maybe all of a sudden you say, I want to become a healer. I want to do healing work with horses because of what I've experienced with this horse. Any plans you have in your mind about what you're going to do with this horse and, oh, I'm going to go do X, Y, Z show level, blah, blah, blah. (laughs) You know, good luck to you. Good luck to you. Yeah. (laughs) They have other plans. They're here to transform you, transform themselves. And it often has this spiritual nature, this this like destiny almost you'll feel Mm -hmm. with them and you'll have this level of connection to them that is epic so it it'll be okay that every change everything changed because what you got in return was something you had no idea was even possible so when you tell the stories about raven when you tell the stories you know about other horses that are you know in your life we're like, oh yeah, that that's yeah, that yeah. water energy that's so special. Totally, diva is definitely I that diva, for, yeah. for me. Yeah, and yeah. Raven's an interesting one because I think we've talked about it. Like she's kind yeah. of a little, you know, she's got that yes. for sure. Um, and but then, you're right. No, you know, I was, there's I was other pieces. Yeah, yeah, you're thinking diva. Yeah, absolutely. And and I know, you know, it's so interesting because when you when you shared this in the apprenticeship. I mean, a lot of people that are, are drawn to apprenticeship are there because of their water horse. Yes, they are. Yes, <laughs> they are. Because they've hit this kind of, what do I do with this place? Yes. Or I need to explore this more. I, I don't I don't have the tools to move forward that I'm needing yes. with this particular horse. Yes. And so it's so cool to see because, yeah, very often it's one horse that they're like, this yes. is the horse that got me here. And I I knew that I needed to you know, traverse this new territory yeah. and, and alas, there we are. shake the world up entirely, yeah. Yeah. right? Like I was fine. I was a horse trainer. I was a rider. I was the fill in the blank. Mm-hmm. This horse came into my life 
with problems I couldn't solve, questions I couldn't solve. And that forced me to transform everything. Mm -hmm. And it's very common that people say that they not only transformed, you know, how they ride or, or something. I mean, it's not that it's mundane, but it's not, it, it's horse related. What, what people often say is that not only did it change how they were with that animal or with animals in general, but their entire life changed. They basically yeah. essentially evolve into the next level of themselves. And yeah. that is the power of water, just as water can, you know, create the, the Grand Canyon and transform rock into, you know, a mile down or, you know, whatever it is. Water has this ability to transform everything. Mm -hmm. And it's not, it, it can be a worse before better. <laughs> it sure can. <laughs> and so we're laughing because we've experienced it, not because we're laughing at you, no, dear listener, but because we get you. If yeah. you've gone through this, if you're going through this now, there are answers, but your typical average person isn't going to have those answers. You're going to have to search under some rocks. You're yes. going to have to go into the deep, dark forest and go on a quest to figure out the answers. And that's what the water element is all about. Mm. Yeah, I love that. I mean, when we think of my story with Diva, it's 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 like precisely that, like a massive soul journey, right? Yeah. I, I mean, this podcast wouldn't exist without her, you know. Yeah, like... exactly. <laughs> exactly. It would all be different right now. So, you know, when I, I see that with so many now, um, where yeah, they this horse has come in and just kind of, you know, taken you know, things by storm and went this isn't going to work for me. We need to do something different. And I just think that's, yeah, so amazing. And I'm sure there's lots of light bulbs going off out there <laughs> for people like, oh my gosh. <laughs> and the other thing that I should just kind of put on the back burner, like we don't have time to go into this today, but just so people understand, um, A, there's a lot more than just behavior. Mm -hmm. Like behavior is huge. And five element theory really does a lot with, behavior, performance, learning styles, all that fun stuff. But there's also in each of these patterns, there are also wellness patterns as well. Yes. So each of the five elements will have certain kind of vulnerabilities in the physical body. And so that can actually sometimes help you figure out what you're dealing with or understand why this behavior tends to be linked up with these kind of ailments and B, that there's a lot of ways to work with the elements, like a ton of ways. Yeah. One is just honoring those, those elements through a good training style that really takes it into account. Yeah. But the other is through acupressure, just so that they understand that there's some really simple, completely safe and accessible hands-on techniques that can be done to support that element's uh, uh, that horse's element because those elements go out of balance. And when the animal is stressed, it'll stress out their more prominent elements more. And so having those acupressure points and knowing that you have tools you can use to bring everything back on track is really powerful. So just know that that's there. I, um, yeah. I was just going to jump into yeah. that because I think it's so, you know, critical, as you say, to understand when you're viewing your horse and maybe viewing some potentially frustrating yeah. wellness patterns yeah. that you see crop up, you know, um, over and over again, or there's a chronicity coming into that pattern, um, to be able to have a different lens to view it through. And I find this part very interesting as a, you know, equine therapist, it's like, okay, I want to understand like, what are the weak points in this system and how can I, you know, address and support? So maybe if we can cruise through Susan from, you know, starting, starting with wood, if you like, but yeah. you know, kind of what, what you're going to necessarily see through yeah. those five elements in, in those particular, you know, more, uh, yeah. So we'll, we'll do the cliff notes version. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So the cliff notes version is that the, there are tissues within the body, organs within the body systems within the body that have kind of a kick me sign on them and are a little more, more vulnerable. 
to each to life to life and so for example the the dynamo that kind of thoroughbred type hard driving horse has tends to have issues with feet yep so hoof quality tendons and ligaments so how many thoroughbreds do you know that have been retired off the track because of a tendon injury um issues with the eyes yep as well as they can have um, allergies, especially in spring. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a lot more. It can actually go to the physical liver itself, which is the one of the organs associated. But I would say that those other things tend to crop up first. You yeah, know? I, I tend to see the, the, tendon, the tendon injuries, especially because the wood horses, the true wood horses that I've met are such go-getters. Oh, yeah. And if you have one of these horses, you know, like they are literally like out on that jump course. Like I have got this. You don't need to do a thing. Just sit back, right? Or I'm good to go. You have to actually force them to do your pattern because yep. they think they yep. know better. Um, yep. And unfortunately, they don't really have always have a true good boundary of what they're capable of. So their oh, yeah. opportunity to to really, like, they don't really relax and rest super well. No. So it's very easy for them to move towards like a chronic overuse yeah. injury because they yeah. just go so hard. Mm -hmm. Or think of hard racing thoroughbred, mm -hmm. two years old, three years old, right? Has a tendon injury. He, so he's a baby in his mind and his body. And now he has a tendon injury. He has been bred for speed, competition, yep. and movement. And now he is in the box for months, healing that tendon injury. If Ugh. you think that treating as a veterinarian, it's fun to come in and treat that horse. It's hard because yeah. that horse is like bouncing off the walls. He is like the ADHD little boy who is like, sit in the the chair in school and no recess are you kidding mm -hmm. and so what is so powerful is knowing that oh with some acupressure no he can't go out and run around the paddock but at least we can kind of take the steam out diffuse and kind of give him oh my god i feel better mm -hmm. and so that is huge that's that's what these points are for is to help us help them i love All right. that so so that's our wood Mm -hmm. animal. Now the fire animal still has a ton of energy, but it's a different quality. This is the drama queen energy. This is the Arabian who is prancing around the arena because they saw plastic in the corner and they're just like hitting the panic button. And so these are horses that are, um, when they're good, you know, everything, you know, when they're balanced, when it's all going well, they're like your favorite to connect to. They love connection. They're motivated by connection. And they're just like your bestest buddies and want to sit on your lap. But when things aren't going well, the kinds of things that will go off is more emotional than physical. So yes, you may have issues with heat regulation. You may have issues with, for example, anhydrosis or other sweating issues. You may have issues with metabolism based on stress. So like stomach ulcers or metabolic issues coming from anxiety. Mm -hmm. But I would say that kind of the, the top of the list there for the fire are actually more emotional issues rather than physical ones. If you get the emotions in place and you get them in a place where they're relaxed and calm and not anxious, a lot of those physical things kind of recede and, and work their way out. Yeah. Um, they obviously can have physical stuff too, obviously. But um, I would say, again, if you get the emotions mm. in place, you're, you got a fighting chance for sure. For sure. I love that. Now, I I learned about fire that oftentimes these are the ones we label like Oh, it's, she's just a chestnut mare, you know? Exactly. So, exactly. <laughs> you know, they get a bad rap, but in large part, it's just this over, you know, what do we say? Overjoy is like yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. what we say for the fire element. It's like, oh, it's like the fire is burning out of control right? and we want to kind of 
you know, just bring it like, bring it back down and like find grounding. that balance. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we'll, when we talk about the relationships, we'll see how the person yeah. can help that animal ground through the person. Yeah. But over time, the goal is to teach that animal to ground in and of themselves. Yeah. Regulate the their learning process system. doesn't mm -hmm. happen overnight, but it, the, the animals get there. And, um, yeah, so it's Beautiful. it's really powerful once you can get, but you you just have to keep it a mind of um, attention span, mm -hmm. getting overstimulated, overexcited, and there is too much of a good thing when we're talking excitement, stimulation, all of that. Yeah. These are the ones that are like, oh, it's so fun. But yeah. that they can actually injure themselves because they're out of their body. They're just up. up. Yeah. I call them giraffes sometimes because they're just like their neck is high, their back is low, and they're like stretched up to the sky. And they need to remember that they're a horse. They've got four feet on the ground. Really, they do. And they just need to settle down into their body. Yeah, that makes so much sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, with the earth type, the good is gold, the types of physical ailments tend to be a they tend to have weight issues now the most common is to be overweight but it can also go in the other direction mm -hmm. where they're having metabolic issues and can't hold weight but more common is the you know the horse that looks at a blade of gr uh, grass and beefs out you know they need they need a diet um you have a lot of digestive issues from constipation all the way to diarrhea to everything in between mm -hmm. Um, teeth issues, definitely you, uh, for our earth animals, uh, we need to pay particular, uh, attention to the dental, uh, the dentist yep. schedule, um, maybe up it from what the other horses need, unfortunately. Yep. And, um, the other kinds of things that we look at are, um, growths in the body. So this mm -hmm. can be something as simple as like a wart or like on a dog, you can see like pomas, fatty, um, tumors. But on the horses, um, it could also turn into sarcoids and it can turn into melanomas and it can turn into cancer. And I don't like to say the big C word to, to scare people. It's more just to know that these things are possible in the range of things. So when you know that the acupressure or maybe acupuncture from a really awesome holistic vet in your area or lifestyle changes um, can take that tendency to grow warts or growths or melanomas if you can balance that you can stay ahead of conditions that we really don't want to see but yeah. these horses also you know we're paying extra attention to the digestive system and making sure that um you know we that's the other c word right colic we're we're making sure that we are staying ahead of that by keeping their digestion happy and keeping their body um, calm and giving them the comfort that they need, not pushing them too hard. And um, hmm. yeah, all that. I find with these ones as well, that they're what I call the energy conservers. So, yes. um, so these are the horses that are like, do we have to go for a ride? Like, exactly. I don't, could I just stay here and eat my hay and you can just scratch me? Yep. <laughs> um, and because this, this uh, element is related to the lymphatic system, it is important that they move, oh, that they been. have movement. So these are the ones where having, like I would say, like a paddock paradise or somewhere where they have to move yes, to yes. do things. I, I know my friend Heather has this amazing setup where her water is like along this track trail and it's almost Love like, it. it's like almost probably two or 300 meters from their main paddock area. So awesome. to get their water, they have to do this obstacle course um, and so they, they have to do that, you know, however many times a day right. and, you know, obviously watch to make sure that they're ingesting enough, and, but the, this sense of, you know, having their hay in different locations and having obstacles that they have yeah. to go over and, you know, this movement that's sort of built into their daily yeah. life is, can be really, really helpful for these types of horses. Yeah. And the, the other thing to remember is that, um, 
it's hard to get them kickstarted. But once yep. they're started, yes, totally. They're okay. They they get this kind of cruise control type level. And these are actually the horses that you can go on a really long, slow trek with, and they're steady. Yep. It's just their their speed becomes, you know, steady walking instead of standing still. Yep. And so it's that that initial part is hard. It's like starting an old train engine. But once they once they're going down the track, they're okay. And they actually will surprise you on how um how much endurance yep. and athleticism they can bring to their work, but they have you have to be regular. You can't just train them once a week. You know, they need more than that. No, yeah. these are not your weekend warriors. I mean, no horse should be a weekend warrior, honestly. Right, right. But <laughs> right. yes, yeah, awesome. Mm-hmm. But the uh, um the next one is the metal. And um, I've mentioned already some of the physical ailments that come up, because again, when they get off emotionally and they're stressed and turning internal, you may not see outward signs emotionally, behaviorally, that they're stressed, but you will start to see physical signs. First one will be um, um, kind of uh, coughing, any kind of respiratory Mm -hmm. ailments. Um, will start to crop up and you're like, oh, no, 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 that's, that's because it's, you know, the, the arena is dusty. Yeah, but why is your horse coughing and not all of the horses are coughing? Mm-hmm. You, mm-hmm. Your horse has some level of vulnerability there. We might also see skin issues and that's a really common way that it's like the stress is coming out. He's trying to hide it, trying to hold it in, but it's kind of coming out through his pores and it could be any kind of skin issues from dry to to more damp and greasy. It can really be anything, but it shows up in the skin Um, and it can also kind of advance to any kind of immune issues, autoimmune Mm -hmm. or regular immune immune issues. Um, it can, and again, in the respiratory system, you may see a horse that gets coughs or gets runny noses, you know, all those kinds of things show up. But then the other, the other part, like we, we know what's going on in the front end with the respiratory system on the hind end, we got the colon. So you may have, um, issues within, um, like, um, really dry manure and it tends to be issues that like the they're not passing they're not eliminating as well as they could mm-hmm. and obviously that's not ideal no absolutely yeah yeah that's super important I also found do you find this Susan with metal with the different horses that they often can be like I find with metal horses sometimes they like very often they are grays yes. and then and yes. like you know there's like I, all the wood horses I've met are bays. Um, yes. <laughs> you know? Yes. So and we have so, a lot of chestnuts yes. who are fire. Fire, yeah. Mm-hmm. Earth can kind of go yeah. a, a lot. Totally. But yeah, we absolutely get a lot of the metals are, are grays. And of course, it's not that simple. But no. it can be part of the pattern and go, yeah, they fit mm-hmm. into it. And it's just so funny how how that works. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But the final one, the final one was going to really have you scratching your head. So when you get to the water element, our wise mystic, they are as mysterious and as complex as all of the others put together. And so kind of on the first level, you have a lot of conditions that show up in old age. So creaky joints, arthritis, Uh, For dogs, it would be loss of hearing. We don't see that so much with the horses, but um, works with people and dogs really well. Um, And urinary issues and reproductive issues. So those are kind of some of the things that can can show up. Um, But what we also, those are kind of standard. So if you go and read about the water element in your typical books, you'll find those Mm -hmm. kinds of things. Joints, bones, arthritis, Signs of old age um, are are kind of fall into that category. But to make things more complicated, the water element is able to transform itself into a lot of different shapes. And so if you think of water can be poured into like a low flat bowl or a tall skinny vase, it can take different shapes. And it's still water, but it's taking a different form. 
And what we see with the water element is that what often happens is the horse is the same horse, but they'll take on these other elements as a, what we call a mask. So for a while, it might look like you have this water element animal that has all sorts of interesting transformative aspects in your relationship, and yet they're acting through the mask of, say, wood. And so you may end up with wood symptoms for a while. One of the ways that you would know that you're dealing with what is at truth, water at the core, and not just a straight wood, is that those masks may change over time. Mm -hmm. Or to look at the extremity. So what we see with uh, what we see with the water element is things tend to be bigger, more extreme. So extreme in beneficial ways. So if you look at like Olympic level horses, horses that are like extraordinary secretariat level, oh my God, those do tend to be the water horses. They're outliers, but you also have them on the other end of things where they just have this after that, after this, after that. And you have a close relationship with your veterinarian. <laughs> but you're learning amazing things every day. So yeah. there are some really wonderful, amazing things to go with that. A lot of people who end up with horses for who, for one reason or another, end up being non-ridden horses. Um, so for those of you who have horses that you love and adore and you have this connection with them, but you don't ride them, I see you, I know you, I understand you because a lot of you aren't understood by all of your horse buddies who are like, why would you have a horse if you can't ride them? But you know, you understand. Mm -hmm. And a lot of you have water horses and they are extraordinary relationships that you can develop. But mm. they may also come with the package of extraordinary health challenges that are kind of difficult. And so I feel for you on that. Yeah. Definitely. And I, yeah, I, I, there's a few horses that are really coming to mind with that. And, yeah. and it's sort of like, I love that you spoke to the non-ridden horse, Susan, because yeah. this has been sort of a topic for me, just wrote an article on it. I think yeah. it's such a big thing in the horse community that, you know, we get so stigmatized around it. Like you need yeah. to have a horse that you can ride. And yet, you know, the value of having these horses yep. in our lives is just like far and beyond you yep. know okay like they could just they they have to be ridden um so i so i really appreciate that that highlight because i think for a lot a lot of people that are not riding their horses me included it's like um this feeling of almost like guilt or shame or i should be or you know yeah, like, like failing like, like i'm failing, failing somehow what? right no. mm -hmm. yeah absolutely so yeah. that's that's a beautiful kind of uh, you know, um, just clarification there. So thank yeah, you. Yeah, I think my final thing that I would say about the water element that um, has been an image that has been useful for me and my students mm -hmm. is that you can kind of imagine the castle, you know, like medieval European castle, where you have the, the castle walls. And let's say that it's kind of a round castle grounds with the courtyard in the center and you have all the life of the castle that's going on in the center. And that's where most of the four elements hang out. The earth, the, the fire, the wood, and the metal. They're all hanging out in this kind of mundane, everyday life of the castle that most people experience. Whereas on the outside, you have the moat, which is the dark water that surrounds the castle. Mm -hmm. And it's where things are on the outside. Now, the, if you're if you're with your water horse, you're in that moat. You can look in to the castle walls and understand that world, but they may not be looking out to see that you even exist. So when you're in that outlier category, you understand their world and your world. They may only understand their world and not yours. So they may dismiss it as being not existing or, mm. oh, it's all in your head or all sorts of dismissive ways of describing your experience, which you know in your body, mind and soul is not what the reality is. Mm -hmm. And so it is it takes a certain level of um, 
courage and confidence that you may discover only over time to live with those water horses and live the adventure that you have with that and learn to trust, trust being one of the main words there, trust that the adventure you're sharing together is exactly right. There's nothing wrong with it. Mm. No matter what the people in the castle grounds think about it, they just don't know. They just, they don't, they, they don't understand it. Unless you have been there or, or in it, you don't, it's hard to understand. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 100%. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Wow. So and this is why, you know, when clients come to me and I work with them with their water horses, a lot of the first sessions are teary. <laughs> People are crying like, oh my God, you get me. Oh my God, I'm not crazy. Oh my God, my horse is okay. Oh my God, our relationship is okay. It's better than okay. It's actually precious and sacred and magical and beautiful. Mm. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah, I can feel that little yeah. tickle. Yes. I get cry- I get teary-eyed about this too. <laughs> I love it. So so I want to get into this topic, Susan, of how the human and the horse interrelate in terms of constitution, because right. I'm so fascinated about this and I want to make sure we yes. get it in right. during our right. time together today. So can you tell us a little sure. bit about what how that interaction works? Well, I think in kind of the old style of dealing with horses was my way or the highway. Like I come in, I I have a training thing or something that I want to do as the human and the horse is there to serve me. So if they don't do it, they get hit, they get punished, they get worked harder, whatever. And of course that has been really transforming. And although those elements still exist out in the horse world, Um, There is such a groundswell now for much more enlightened horsemanship, which is very hopeful, isn't it? But all of the kind of the newer ways, which has always been here, but I think it's coming more to the fore than it has in the past, is creating relationship and honoring the horse as well as honoring our own selves. Um, And that means if you're going to honor who they are as an individual and what their individual needs are, well, you better understand them. Because if you are projecting, my my last horse was like X, Y, Z, so I'm going to treat this horse just the same way, you may, be, you may be really frustrated because the old ways might not work if you've changed types. And so what I love about the five elements is it allows us to step back and more clearly observe who is this horse as an individual? What are their needs? What motivates them? How do they learn? How do they thrive? How do they need to rest? Because the hard driving workaholic might need to rest by doing a hack. They need to still move. Whereas the earth type to rest, that might be truly to rest. Like they're out in the paddock doing nothing. So there are different ways that these animals need to be honored. And also to understand that if we only understand the horse, but we forget ourselves, we may be projecting all sorts of stuff by and not realizing that we're bringing ourselves blindly into our interactions with the horse. And by stepping back again and observing our own needs, our own self, And how that's interfacing with that horse's individual self. Wow. Then you have such fertile ground for cultivating an extraordinary garden of experiences. But it takes work. It takes observation. It takes perception. Like you have to be able to see yourself clearly, see your horse clearly. And that takes some work. But the benefits is that it comes to better learning, better performance, better health, because I'm telling you that the whole whole pattern has its fingers in its health as well, better herd dynamics and better connection for you and that animal, which leads to better happiness for both of you. So it is, um, takes attention, but it's really, really worth it. Mm. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I, I like, I'm, I'm on the edge of my seat. So what would this interaction look like? Say 
I often thought of myself as more of a fire constitution. Yep. I think that's changed a bit, especially with this last year. Yes. Uh, <laughs> you know, life changing experience, Um, you know, and then coming to Diva, definitely a water horse. Raven yep. sort of, I would say, has qualities of more of an earth horse. Yep. Um with some of that water in there yep, for sure so, so how would something like that interaction work um right know, so how would you i think the first thing to do is to understand you know take the steps to better understand your horse and how they respond to stress one of the best ways to identify what category of those five your horse fits into is to understand what stresses them and how they respond in stress. So that's one of the like shortcut ways. It's not mm -hmm. perfect, but it'll get you in the right direction. And that goes for you as well. Like what stresses me out might be totally different from what stresses you out. And we might have really different responses. So you might get frustrated and like a little like short tempered, whereas I might get totally anxious and have a panic attack mm -hmm. So or whatever. And so understanding those differences can guide you to this. And again, hard to do in just one hour. But I think, for example, let's let's take the fire. If we know that the fire horse is motivated by connection and relationship, mm -hmm. that that's at the core. They're motivated by their heart. And we know that they can go in the direction of drama queen, anxiety short attention span and being ungrounded. So we, we go in knowing that. We also have to know what do they look like when they're balanced? Like what's our goal? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How do we, you know, turn the dial so that they're in a better place? What does it look like? Well, they're loving, they're heart-centered, they're passionate, they're like ooey gooey cuddly. And now that's gonna be easier to connect with and to understand if you're an earth type, so that good is gold type, who's just a little more grounded and can kind of say, hey, honey, chill out. Come join me over here. It's cozy over here. Let's hang out. You don't have to be anxious about that thing over there, that that plastic bag in the, the end of the, the arena. Come over here. I got gotcha. you. I'm your buddy. And it can also be easier if you've got a lot of wood element. Now, the wood element, when it's used well, is a really good leader. So I'm not talking about the dictator type leader. I'm talking about healthy wood, which is leadership and says, oh, you're scared. Don't worry. I got gotcha. you. I'm in charge and I'm going to take care of that. Let's do this instead. And so it's it's a it leads them. It sets boundaries like you don't have to go over there to that scary place. Come with me. I'll show you what we need mm -hmm. to do. And I can take care of you. You're good. You're good. And when these two types interface with the out of balance fire, they tend to be like, it's easier. Mm -hmm. What's harder, I would say, for the fire is if you are metal. Because the metal is kind of demanding and kind of no nonsense and can get a little irritated by the fussiness and the drama of the fire. So if that's your nature, if you're really no nonsense, methodical, t -t 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 organized, you may feel like that chaos over there, that bundle of chaos that we call my horse, I'm not, I'm really frustrated. Like I'm irritated right. by that. So understanding that, like that's where you go, you may need to do a little extra work to realize, oh, that's just a different way of being in the world. They're just expressing what's hard for them. I have things that are hard for me. What if I was kind? Mm -hmm. What if I gave them that sense of grounding and lovingness that I know they can attack, get to? Wow, oh, okay. Then we can just get to work. And what I value as the metal person is getting things done, productive, working. Well, if I if I give them that support, they're going to be able to work with me. Mm -hmm. And so I get my needs met. They're going to get their needs met because they're doing better. Everybody's happy. 
And so the other element that can have some challenges with the fire is the water type. And this is because the water tends to be a little panicky, a little emotionally unstable. Mm -hmm. The water can be emotionally unstable. So when you have two that are unstable, that can be that can be a thing. So both the metal and the water people are going to have to work a little bit extra to get in there and just make sure that they are taking care of honoring the horse and not projecting their judgment or sharing too much of that merging so that you're both panicking instead of only one. Whereas, you know, the water can say, no, I choose to embody the groundedness of the earth because the water can be anything. If that's true, if I can embody any of the elements as the water element, because I can change shape, I'm going to embody earth which is exactly what that mm. freaked out fire horse needs. Oh, okay. Then we wow. get to connect through groundedness. And so the, 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 the last combo that's both maybe wonderful as well as challenging is the fire fire. So if you're both fire, you're going to understand each other really well, but you can also get out of balance at the same time. So again, you as human are given the opportunity to work into the more balanced aspect of fire, being loving, being heart centered, mm -hmm. being quiet, being like, you know, that feeling you get when you do meditation or Tai Chi. If you can go there, you can bring your, your fire into your healthy fire and you can both experience the heart-centered passion that you share. So there, these kinds of scenarios are there for all five of the elements. Obviously, you've got a lot of combos that can happen. Some are going to be easier. Some are going to be harder. But here's the key. Here's the one key. So if I was to you know, turn mm -hmm. off the recording right after this, here's the key. If one of you in the relationship is balanced, it can work. Yep. It can be harder or work, you know, easier. But if one of you, ideally you, mm -hmm. is balanced, you can work it out. It's when one of, if both of you are spinning out in your own respective elemental drama, that you're in trouble because mm -hmm. there's nobody to kind of turn the ship around. And any of these combos can work. Some are easier, some are harder, but any of them can work. As long as one of you is on the up and up. Mm. And we definitely see that sometimes it's the horses are the ones that are the centered mm -hmm. one. And that's hard to watch sometimes because yeah. it shouldn't be that way. You have a bigger responsibility, I think, to at least a lot of the time, maybe not every moment, but a lot of the time, be the one that's doing your absolute darndest to being the balanced one. So that that horse can go through their experience of being in or out of balance and, and work their way and learn and grow and evolve. Now, obviously, you're going to have your moments, too. That's that's human. But again, it's working so that you reduce the amount of time that you spend in your out of balance time. It's your responsibility to try to be as balanced as possible. I love that. Yeah, that's the perfect like for the we're nearing the end of the podcast so it's like yeah, yes yeah. that's like that's that's the piece that really brings it all together i think today right, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. yeah and yeah. so i have worked up you know a whole kind of um kind of in a um uh what am i trying to say like a, a little outline yeah of all the different yep. possible interactions and i'll make that available to your uh, readers because again, there's not enough time to go into it and it's not everything, but it'll give you some kind of someplace like a jumping off place to kind of think about it. I love it. So we'll put that up at wholehorse.ca. So if you're listening on iTunes or Spotify, you can head over to wholehorse.ca and find this episode and I'll, it'll be listed under resources there. That's so appreciated, Susan. Thank sure. you. Yeah. I want everybody to have this information. <laughs> <laughs> no, me too. Awesome. Oh my gosh. And how do people get in touch with you, Susan? What's the best way to find you? 
If you're on social media a lot, probably the best way is to just follow us on Facebook because mm -hmm. that's where we have the most kind of rotating free content. And so we have yep. tons of points and suggestions and all sorts of stuff there. And if you're wanting to dive in a little bit, um, probably the first place to go that I would suggest is we have this one course called Thrive in Five. As you can guess, it's about the five elements. It's just 15 bucks. It's just a like a, a two hour kind of just like little nugget class that you can get a first feeling of how to find out which element your course is. And, you know, from there, we have tons and tons more classes and courses and whatever, if you're interested. But I think that the Thrive in Five is just a great place to get that first feeling that kind of takes what we've been talking about and go to the next level. Love it. Amazing. Thank you, Susan. This has been oh, great. Thank you. I just like, this is my mission is to share this mm -hmm. insight that I have been lucky enough to receive from the legacy of classical East Asian medicine. So having the opportunity to spread the word is always, always just something I'm so grateful. Wonderful. Well, we benefit from it and we appreciate it. So yeah, thank you again for being here and always a wonderful chat. And thank you, everybody out there for listening. I hope you learned a thing or two and we would love to hear your comments and questions. Uh, and yeah, we'll see you again for an episode very, very soon. Thanks. Bye for now, everyone. Bye. Bye.